What is clear though, and where I think Boris Johnson and Ray Puddyfoot and many of the others of opponents of Heathrow, where they, where they say that, when they say that Heathrow's in the wrong location, what they're really talking about is, is about noise. And what they're saying is that Heathrow is just too noisy. It's the flight paths for Heathrow fly over too many people. And they disrupt the lives of too many people. And on that, we would agree with them. Heathrow must get quieter. It has got quieter over the last 30, 40 years, even though we've doubled, trebled in, in, in a number of flights. The footprint of the airport has decreased by 90%. But we need to continue getting better. And this slide here shows you how, in our view, even if we built a third runway, and therefore <coughs> increased the number of flights going to Heathrow by 50%, we still believe that by 2030, so only five years after the third runway would open, we'd have 10 to 15 percent fewer people within the within the footprint than today. So that's 50 percent more flights, but 10 to 15 percent fewer people. How would that be achieved? Quieter planes, very key. We've now got the A380, 787. More airlines fly the A380 and the 787 to Heathrow than any other airport in the world. We charge 10 times more to fly into Heathrow if you're using a noisy 747 than if you use an A380. That affects airlines' decisions about what aircraft to fly to Heathrow. We're the only airport in the world that has those kinds of extremes of pricing. Because we're full, because people, airlines want to fly here, we're like a club that everyone wants to join, that we can actually set the rules. Other airports spend millions on marketing themselves around the world to attract airlines. We're turning airlines away. So we can dictate the rules by which you join our club. And one of those rules is, you fly the quietest, most modern airport. Quieter operating procedures. We need to work with NATS, we need to work with CAA to change the flight paths to mean that Heathrow overflies less populated areas, mainly out to the west, but also to the south as well. Less um, approaches over London. Steeper approaches, which means the aircraft will be higher over West London. Landing aircraft halfway down the runway, or third of the runway, a third of the way down the runway, what's called displaced thresholds. Again, means the planes will be higher over West London, means the number of people impacted will be fewer. Also, our option that's been shortlisted, which is the northwest of the current site, I'll come on to it in a minute, what it means by moving the runway, by moving the new runway that much further, a mile, mile and a half further to the um, west of the airport, means again, aircraft will be higher over West London, means there will be less noise. Respite, guaranteed relief from noise for the people living under the flight path. That was probably one of the biggest mistakes that Heathrow, or BAA as we then were, made in 2008-9 with our original third runway proposal, was that it was going to be used all the time on something called mixed mode. It would have been used for landing and takeoffs all day every day. It would have meant that the communities living either side of that new runway would have never had any break from noise. What we hear very clearly from local people when we speak to them is that that respite, yes, noise is annoys them, but what makes it bearable is that at least they get a break from it. So providing guaranteed periods of relief from noise, respite is, is essential. And then at the end, the noise insulation. Even after we've done all the others, there will still be an impact. We need to present a more um, generous package of noise insulation so that when there is um, noise being created, we can minimise the impact of that as much as possible. So, what is the option that the, our option that the uh, Commission has shortlisted? As Rob said, um, they, have short, they have shortlisted a, 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 another option from Heathrow, which, from a company called Heathrow Hub Limited, which is to extend the Northern Runway for its kind of double its length out that way. And I think, Rob, you're going to, Heathrow Hub will be presenting in the future that Heathrow meeting, you hope, so that they can present on their option. But, you know, obviously tonight I'm presenting on our, our option. Um, so our option is to build a new full-length runway to the northwest, um, over the current site of Harmonsworth, Harmonsworth Moor, the old Slane, um, and Longford. So, um, it's easier to see on the plan, the, the bit more detail. So these are the current, current southern runway, current northern, northern runway, uh, Terminal 2, Terminal 5. So what the new runway would require is a new Terminal 6, opposite uh, Terminal 5. Served then by tra transistors to a series of tra um, satellite terminals. And then you can probably see as well there that 
Terminal 3 disappears, and the idea is that Terminal 2 and its satellites would serve this bit, Terminal 5, this bit, and Terminal 6. So we'd end up, essentially, the future of Terminal 4 is uncertain because of the impact that <coughs> Terminal 4 has on aircraft needing to cross the sub runways and the impact that has on capacity. So the future, essentially, is three terminals in between the two existing runways with satellite terminals serving uh, yeah, serving the flights. Um, requires the M25 to be tunnelled. Wouldn't mean closing the M25, as the Mayor has alleged. What would happen is the tunnel would be built, and then once it's been built, then traffic would be directed into it, and then the existing M25 would be um, closed. That happens at other airports around the world, at um, Atlanta Airport and at... Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. Currently, motorways do go under runways, so it's nothing. You know, there are you know, there are risks, but nothing that, that 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 can't be managed. We have actually, though, already been working on revising or alternative uh, proposal, and this is uh, one that brings the runway slightly further to the south, which means that we don't impact on the M25 M4 junction so much. It means that the north part of Harmonsworth um, is, not so, um, is not destroyed, so it means that the Great Barn and the church in Harmonsworth uh, survive. It means that the runway gets closer to Carnbrook, so not so good for the residents there, but you know, there are pluses and minuses. So one, as Rob referred to, we're launching a, commission, um, a consultation next week, and the consultation document ask a series of questions of people about what they think their priorities are, or so not what they think, what are their priorities in terms of the issues we should be looking at as we, as we refine our proposal. The Airports Commission has asked us to submit a revised proposal by the 9th of May. So we've got about four months to take our original proposal and to see how we can work on it, fine tune it, so that it is the most, in our view, the most uh, efficient um, and balanced proposal balancing community, negative community impacts with the positive impacts of more jobs and more, um, you know, of, of greater contribution to the economy. Where does that balance lie? That's one of the, you know, what kind of issues should we be focusing on? That's what essentially the, the, the consultation will be carrying out over the six weeks from next week um, looks at. We'll also be asking people about their views on relief from noise and respite, whether people agree with us that that is a key issue we should be looking at. We'll also be asking people just for general comments and feedback on how could we improve um, our option. And we'll be flagging up to them about the, the blight and compensation issues that we need to consult with as we develop our thinking with the Commission and DFT. What we won't be asking people is whether they support the concept of a third runway, although well, I'm sure we'll get some strong views on that. Um, because that, that's, that's what the Commission, what the Government will be doing later in the year. What this is about is that if the Commission recommend a third runway Heathrow, what's the best possible scheme that we can come up with, with <coughs> input from the local community, that means that it's going to deliver the maximum number of benefits with the minimum amount of negative impact. This is a summary of the main costs and benefits. Um, this is Heathrow today. The middle column is our um, analysis that we submitted to the Commission back in last July. And this column here is the Airports Commission analysis that they put out in December. So, looking at the capacity, it takes the capacity of the airport from 80 million today to 130. We're at we just came up with our figures for last year. 73 million <coughs> passengers came through Heathrow last year. So we've still got, you know, 9, 8% in terms of passenger capacity to play with. But maximum number of flights, 480 last year, we operated 478,000. So, you know, 99, 98.7% capacity, I think it is, we are at. But you can see with the third runway moving to 740,000. Uh, so a 50% increase. Just over 50% increase. In terms of cost, we cost it at 17 billion, about 13 to 14 billion of that is definitely be paid for by the private sector. The remaining 3, 4 billion is for surface access improvements. 
And there's a debate to be had with government as to whether we pay for that or whether central government does. In the past, airports have paid for the airport infrastructure, the taxpayer has paid for the surface access. But we'll have to see if that is still the case going forward. Reassuringly, the Airports Commission analysis came up with between 13 and 18 billion. So of all of the options that were shortlisted, we're the only ones who got within the um, Airports Commission um, <coughs> range. Length of new runways, you see a full length runway, not like last time where there's only be a short length runway. In terms of the noise population within the, 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 the contour, actually the Commission feel we've been conservative. We felt that we could decrease by 15%, they've gone for 30%, I mean, which is good. Our residential properties lost, on that one, we'd said 950, they said 1500. We, I challenged them, I had a meeting with the Commission last week and said, how have you got your 1500? Because my team have counted every house that's in the boundary, so how have you got 1500? And they said they worked it out by the average uh, housing density in this area of London is 500 per hectare, and because we're taking three hectares, they've multiplied 500 by three. So, <laughs> I think on that particular issue, I think their, their analysis leads something to be So that's what they've said. And actually, well, that 950 is based on that option. That option is actually 650. So, you know, there's more work possibly we can do to reduce that number even further. If you think back to 2009, that um, option was 2,800. So you can see we're significantly a quarter, a third at worst, um, we are um, you know, prepared for the 2009 version. Uh, ecological impact, zero, zero. Volume of flood zone, there is some area there that needs to be, I think recent events, particularly in the south of the airport, show it's very important that we make sure that we replace that lost um, storage for flooding. And then grade one and two listed buildings, I said the original proposal was two and four. Um, there's, again, it's, there's some debate with the Commission which you need to uh, finalise. Actually, that option, the answer is zero. So that option's two, in our view, that's zero, but the Commission, we need to do some more work the Commission to understand their thinking on that one. Our ten commitments. These we published last July, when we had three options. They remain just as valid today, and they will remain just as valid next year and the year after. These are the ten commitments that Heathrow Airport Limited have made today and we want to be kept to. I think it's really important, and I was very, well, internally in Heathrow, I was a very keen supporter of us having a clear set of principles that we wouldn't, other things are negotiable, but on these things it wasn't. And things like protecting all of the local jobs and creating new jobs, reducing aircraft noise, treating local people fairly. I felt it was very important that we've got those set there, that people can keep them to, they, they can keep us to them. And you know, <laughs> I'm proud that we've got those there, and I'm proud that we're going to be kept to those and we will meet them.